All right, welcome to Live 44. We're live. Um, no welcome. idea if anyone's watching right now, but uh, we hope you're we hope you're tuning in uh, or or watching. What's the correct streaming? Uh, tuning in. Just yeah. I like tuning in. Tuning in. Uh, right. Got a new mascot. Um, we were looking for a potential name, so if you want to get into the chat feature. Um, he's supposed to be going more crazy. Yeah, it's like, he's pretty it's stable. Like a miniature car dealership. There he goes. There, awesome. And it's really <laughs> loud. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's like a like a car engine. Um, well, anyway, we got we got a, uh, a bunch of things in store. Uh, my name is Justin. This is Jake. I don't know who's watching completely, so there's a chance you might not know us. Um, but we uh, uh we're gonna have uh, you can get to know us. Yeah. Well, you're yeah. Well, we're gonna actually give a moment here. We're gonna let you guys uh, throw in some questions for us for later, but. We wanted to start while people are kind of getting in because we don't know how many. Uh, some people came in right at six. I just, that was so loud. Thank you. Oh, it's huh. how long will it last um, without any? I'm impressed. Okay, so um, uh, we're gonna give us some giveaways while we're waiting for some some people. And so Dan's gonna move us over to uh, he's a little sidekick app that um, allows us to do a randomizer. So if you registered. Yeah. Really, up until like 10 minutes ago, uh, if you were in there, we got you into the system. Um, and so we have some uh, with some prizes uh, we're going to mail out uh, oh, yeah. that are uh, hopefully useful. Oh, that's Dan's desktop. Dan's Jeep. It's one of his fleet. That's the uh, giveaway. Is that the giveaway? The, are you person? giving away your Jeep? Dan's. No, that's a no. Getting uh, negative on that. We're going to uh, we're going to be uh, giving away one. Uh, got some donations here for you. We realized that uh, because. Um, Germs are a thing right now. We're going to give away some soap. Um, well, they're a thing all the time, but mm -hmm. they're especially. We we're going to be doing the the volunteer voluntold, the generator. randomizer, the gener the the random giveaway thing. Yes, uh, and while we're waiting <laughs> on that, um, we also have some. Uh, you, say you guys are bored. There he goes. We have some that nice. He's oh, done. Oh, oh, uh, I'm not this guy. oh, there he goes. <laughs> we have some uh, large prints. I don't know why it's large print. That's just kind of what they gave us. Um, crossword, word search puzzles, there we are. Um, and so figure if you're bored, uh, you know, we can mail these for relatively low cost because they're small mm -hmm. uh, or they're light, I should say. And uh, they give you something to do or uh, they're large prints. So they could also give something for your grandpa to do. Uh, so they're, they're for all generations. But um, so this, one, this first person, uh, you're not going to win. We're just showing you <laughs> how this works. But if you see so your sorry, name, I just want to give you a, like a virtual high five. Congrats, you didn't win anything. All right, so, but let's see, uh, see who, this is, a, this is, a, to be clear, you are not winning anything right here. This is, uh, <laughs> this is, uh, Corinne, congratulations. Corinne. The congratulations. likelihood that you win anything else tonight is drastically lower now because your name was used as our example. Corinne, I'm so, just picturing how mad she felt. She's, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I hope, I hope you made it in in time to see your name on the screen, <laughs> not realize that you didn't win anything, and now it's registering. All right, so, um, bar soap. Bar soap. For, okay, so this is for a bar of soap, Dove, bar of soap. or Irish Springs. It's we're gonna, we've got a lot here. So we'll go with the Dove. We'll go with Dove right All right, let's see what we got here. Then for Thanks some, for joining us. If you're just coming in, we're just kicking it off with some Summer Sarai. Summer. She will, I'm sure, appreciate. Your ass. Um, Can this be my gift for your grad party? Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Congrats for graduating. Some Dove. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of sad though too that hopefully you get to have a grad party. That's not over Zoom. Um, this is real that, sad. We had to make that depressing from the <laughs> yeah, beginning. Okay, you win. Let's, let's move to another prize. Um, we have uh, uh, the word the search. Word search. <laughs> Large print word search right here. Um, I, uh, this one right here. Let's see. We're going to do one last one. We'll do some at the end as well. We just want to figure we'd start out with a little bit of uh, some prizes. Karis Nichols. Oh. All right. Uh, so someone in the yeah, Nichols family is going to have some fun with this. Uh, you have... Uh, Let's see here. I'm gonna give you what Disney Critters is, is Puzzle 21. That looks like fun. Uh, so that's Critters? got Karis' name all over it. And this was uh, summer, right? Yeah. So well, there you go. All right. So we got Congrats. some more prizes uh, in the uh, in the near future here. Um, yes. Now we are going to um, again. It's your welcoming. If you haven't used, I'm gonna kind of go out of order here and encourage you to use the chat feature yes. uh, in the. Um, uh, this this webinar uh, you can interact with each other um, the way this is set up the way Jake and I are doing this we can't see you um, we actually aren't even um, looking at the chat however uh, Dan is our um, kind of sound guy slash uh, visual arts 
guy <laughs> slash. Well, right now he's got chip two order. iPads and three laptops. That three. He's that I'm, uh, we're not. I'm not That's even entirely sure what all That's of them are doing. Going on. Um, but there's a lot happening, and Tara is behind the scenes as well helping. If you so here, if that chat feature, what you can use one if you just want to interact with each other, you can do that. Um, uh, or if you do have a question that you want to make it to us, it's probably more helpful to go through that. Mm -hmm. um, and then Dan and Tara can weed them out and they can tell us so our phones aren't, aren't like super distracting while we're doing this. Yes. Um, and uh, then also, um, we want to use this time. Normally when we meet, we have a little box in the back of the block where you can ask, uh, ask us questions. Um, and like three of you do that. Uh, and so <laughs> you we can tell because it's the same handwriting. Same handwriting. <laughs> And the questions are kind of the same. Yeah. Uh, they involve the same people. <laughs> yeah. But so, hopefully now we'll get a wider range of people asking questions. Yeah. And Elena, um, we do appreciate uh, you writing questions and, and Adam, those are two yes. or three at least. Uh, but, um, but this, if you want, if you have questions for us for our weekly midweek videos that we just kind of do updates, um, you know, a lot of times we try to answer some of those. If you want to, this is an even easier way. You can just pop some questions in there. We'll maybe answer them uh, later and they can be serious, funny, whatever. Um, they make our announcement videos a little more exciting. So yeah, you can use which means you'll have to check in on the announcement video to see your question get answered by us. And what day do those come those out? come out on Friday? Friday, I believe. nice. I believe those come out on Friday. So check back in on Friday to get the answer to your question from today. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, um, so we're gonna switch over to the 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 first to ten game, and it, yeah. there's a. Um, I'm going to explain it while Dan's – oh, man, he got to it yeah. quick. Okay, so the way this game works is there's, there's like 40 different options. It's kind of another randomizer game that are just in, uh, in the game. There, there are different things that you could possibly do while you're stuck at home. Uh, and uh, maybe you've done them, maybe you haven't. So although it's his first to ten, we're only going to um, – we're only going to do five, right? And so it's an honor system oh, with, yeah. with a chat feature. Hopefully you have access to that. Um, or you can text if you're like, I don't know where the chat feature is. I can't find it, <laughs> but you can figure out how to text while still doing this. If you're on the phone or something like that, you can text Jake or I will we'll figure it out. But, um, it's, it's, things are gonna come up. It's kind of like bingo. And if the first person who five of these things are true of you, right, you win. That's, mm -hmm. that's just basically how it works. So it's a quarantine edition. So these are all things like maybe like not showered for 24 hours. Like, if um, you want to admit, yeah, I guess 24 hours, 24, well, do that like a whole, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's not that long, confession time right here. Uh, but really yeah, it's not, not that's long. not as crazy. Uh, but I mean, there's some things here that maybe be true of you. So we're going to, Dan's going to randomize. We're going to see the first person say bingo or something when you have it in the, in the chat. So we know who's the first and then Tara and Dan are monitoring that to see who the first is to, to win. Uh, see, let's see here. Um, we'll click for the first one. Again, if it's true of you, it's an honor system here. Cause we it's always an honor system really. Cause we don't know. I wish there was a way to make them play the game that we played last week. Eating, oh, I hear the noise, but I only see the eating screen. all the crackers. Oh. That was oh. disgusting. Uh oh. Well, we're waiting on that. Um, <laughs> let's uh, a little technical uh, difficulty. I can hear the game working in the background, and uh, but I, I can only an see on yeah. March Morning Madness. Do it while we're waiting. Um, so March Morning Madness, you guys continued voting again. Um, so thank you for that. So there was four cereals left this week. We yes. had Frosted Flakes going against Lucky Charms and Cinnamon Toast going against Fruit Loops. Um, so this was a semifinal um, for the, to make it to the championship, essentially. So who do you think, Frosted Flakes or Lucky Charms? Who would oh, you I'm going to go with Lucky Charms. Yes, that is Mark true. It was, it was closer than I would have thought. It was 47% to Frosted Flakes and 53% to Lucky Charms. So Lucky Charms is moving on to the championship. Um, Cinnamon Toast Crunch and Fruit Loops. Um, who would you have chosen between cinnamon, cinnamon Toast, toast Crunch, crunch a little more sugar there. Yeah, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, uh, much bigger gap, 60% to 40%. Wow. Um, so next week, vote for the champion. It is going to be between Lucky Charms and Cinnamon Toast Crunch, which yeah. I feel like those were both one seeds. For yeah, sure. yeah they, that's not a, there's no seeds. underdog. That's yeah. not an upset, um, I don't think. No, I, I would have put them I got. Them. I'm going to go ahead and just predict Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Uh, Ooh, I'm gonna put it out. I'll there, go with right? like I was leaning towards Lucky Charms. Oh, okay, I, I you think, can't be. You know, at the end when there's just marshmallows left. Did you ever do that? Just yeah, eat out I, all the stuff. I feel like there's a target want. audience with, with Lucky Charms. It's like this is I'm for kids. Where target. cinnamon toast crunch kind of like I can still eat this as an adult and feel like an adult. So you're saying I'm a child? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, Lucky Charms just it's hard to. All hard right, to feel if like you guys are in the chat room talking, please agree with me. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's tough we'll to see how the voters of 
only marshmallows. And uh, hey, Dan, what's our Instagram account name? How, how can they find us on Instagram? Calvary Next Gen. Um, all right. Uh, and then you'll be able to vote and all, all that through, through that. We'll give some more announcements. Uh, not sure that the game's gonna gonna work, but uh, I have to relay. We um, relay the things. We might be able to off the cuff do something. Tara, are you in the chat? On the stream. All right. Um, let's let's have a little bit of fun. Uh, any anyone have any questions for Jake? Uh, you'd like <laughs> any personal questions for Jake? That I was gonna relay. Um, <laughs> I was gonna relay the quarantine thing. Now we're getting personal. Uh, Why? Yeah, uh, any, uh, I don't know if I signed up for that. Anyone have any personal questions you'd like Jake to answer in front of everybody? What happened to your hair? What happened to oh, my hair? Oh, burn. I don't know. That's about that. Is that a good thing or I, I like it's it? It's probably not a good thing. Uh, Brooke cut it. So oh, I think man. Brooke's watching just right now. So right under. Just, you're under the bus. It looks good though. I, um, I wanted to go shorter on the sides because I like to, again, with that whole like not showering for 24 hours, I like to be able to wake up and not deal with anything. Oh, yeah. So if you buzz it down to a one, guys, um, then you can just roll out of bed and not have bed head. Life hack. Uh, so right it's just there. shorter on the side and taller on the top. I don't know. It's. Sure. The life of all right. Being married and slowly stopping caring. Uh-oh. That's the screen of death. Um, so uh, the only personal I'm, question? I'm preaching next week uh, in the main services, so I'm I'm probably gonna like need a haircut by then. And Katie's not cut my hair in years, so Oof. well, you That's might be good. asking that same question for me next week. Uh, so we'll see. <laughs> any other questions? Any other? Any? Nobody has anything. Okay, we're some more questions. announcements. Um, Thank you. Uh, I'm uh, so Wednesday. As it, these are just options, right? We we realize different people have different schedules right now, and some of you are still doing school. Some of you are like bored out of your minds. Um, there is a video uh, on YouTube. Some of you have seen, I know, because I've talked to some students who've watched it. It's it's a um, it's called American Gospel. You can find it on mm-hmm. YouTube. Um, there's a two hour version, and there's also like a 58 minute version. We're gonna do a Facebook watch party uh, next Wednesday, uh, this Wednesday, I guess you'd yeah. say, at 3:30. Um, I think I sent out something saying it was going to be Monday. It's Wednesday at 3.30. Um, it's only only like 58 minutes or something like that. But the benefits of a watch party, uh, if you do it through Facebook, is you can kind of, I believe, chat. I've not actually done one yet, so it's going to be fun. But uh, we can you can ask questions, and we'll, Jake and I will attempt to maybe answer your questions if you're watching and you're confused. It's looking at um, how a lot of churches have just just mixed up the gospel. So it is, it's an informative video. I think mm-hmm. it is, uh, it's, it's educational. It's, which, very, it's very current. It's current, yes. Too. It's something that we're facing in the church right now, yeah. um, for sure. And especially since you guys, I mean, honestly, you're streaming, and, and you can check out churches from all over. It's, uh, it's, it helps differentiate even why maybe there are some different denominational differences. And this might initially sound boring to you, but my, my guess is some of you listening have tuned into other churches that, have, that preach a very different gospel and maybe not even realized it. And so this can be helpful as you're even navigating what you're streaming uh, while you're stuck at home. So I'd encourage you if you have, again, it's three 30 Wednesday. Um, if you, if you can't join us, I'll also put the link out there so you can watch it really anytime. It's on YouTube. Um, yeah, and feel free to ask us questions during. Um, but if you log in later to watch that link, um, we're always available for questions as well through email or text or a phone call. Um, so yeah, definitely join us if you can. It'd be fun. Absolutely. Um, it will not spin. Will not spin. Is it spinning There's on your probably computer? a little button that, it's hard to find that would fix that, but um, you know what? I don't know where it's at. So, if he can spin it, we can relay it to the audience. Maybe the item. Yeah, I guess that works. Can you can you see an item? Yeah. Oh, that worked. Yeah. yeah, I don't know that. That's what I was talking about. Relay, and then oh, you made me. Have I, then I went a whole different route. Okay. Everybody. So um, so Which we're gonna is like not what I wanted. To <laughs> well, I like the haircut, man. I'm, I'm, no matter what, everyone watching. Sorry, bro. <laughs> All right, Dan, do you want to realize uh, something? It's getting awkward. All right, so if you've purchased a video game online, all right, if you've done that in the, since, this, since this started, we'll say in the last two weeks. In the last two weeks, two purchased weeks, a video like game March online. March 15th, I think, was the last. So if, that, if you did do that, again, to re-explain the game, you now have one. Yeah. And we're doing first to five um, right now because 10 might take a while. So you would have one. Once you get five, let us know in the chat and you'll be the winner of yeah. the game. So I know there's a few guys out there for sure. All right. So next one. All right. I have not. So I've I'm not, still I've at not. zero. Still playing the same video one. games. Fought with a parent or sibling. This Ooh. is an easy one. All right. If you <laughs> fought with a parent or a sibling, right? That's one, right? So that uh, if you're watching with a parent right now and they disagree with you, just <laughs> just go with it. All right. You've, you've done it. All you right. You got so, one. If you're out there watching, 
We've got one. All right. <laughs> Some of you maybe up to two. Probably Joe Bonifant, I'm guessing. Uh, probably probably two. Uh, wow, what's this oh, man? All right. <laughs> Number three. See the third option here. We're just going to – normally you'd see these items like flashing through here, but mm -hmm. technical difficulties. Kind of work. If you've been to work in the last two weeks. Mm. Oh, so that's, that's going to – that's one's – that's going to get – you, yeah, welcome. Uh, it's one clocking in. Uh, so there's a. Um, I fought with a. Is it parent or sibling? Yeah. No, I don't think I've. It helps if you don't live with a parent or my sibling. My kids, maybe. <laughs> um, so I'm at one, two. All right. So next. All right. So wait, that's a few there. I think that's the third one. Uh, had a home cooked meal. Uh, so had only home cooked meals. Oh. Oh. Only home had cooked meals. Only home cooked meals. Uh, that's no. That's um, not me. No. Or can't. I mean, that counts. And like, even though it's not cooked, if it's like chips, that's home cooked. I mean, I think if like that's, home cooked yeah, includes not like out. not. If you haven't had takeout. If no cooking was involved, Ooh. it's still okay. Anybody? That's five. Anybody? No, that's four. I think. Oh, that, that I think we're three. only at four. Well, all um, right. Next one. Uh, watch Frozen Two. Watched Frozen Two. Disney Plus owners or renters subscribers. That's probably Frozen Two. Frozen Two. Oh, I just yeah. watched it because. Uh, my sister, oh, that's, that's me. um, let me use your Disney plus account. Cause she came over. Nice. Um, and so I watched frozen Two for the first time. I've seen it. Uh, <laughs> I'll say, I've seen it a few times. We'll just say that. Times. Um, my daughter is a fan. All right. Next one. Wow. Uh, no exercise. <laughs> no exercise. <laughs> I, I've actually, I don't know. I've, I was waiting to see if you're going to, no, no, I, I, I've done it. I don't know if the amount of food I eat doesn't really wash out how much I exercise, but it, uh, or however that works. I, it, yeah. it doesn't, doesn't help really. It just yeah. slows down the weight gain. Um, yeah. I've also exercised. So I guess I don't get that. Nothing Nobody's so far. Nobody, yet. nobody. All okay. Right. All right. Next one. Uh, not left your neighborhood. Not, not left your neighborhood in the last two weeks. Oh. Some of you, I know, oh, like you're on like serious lockdown. You're, you're, you're like, haven't seen the sun in a while. All right, next one. <laughs> I just got a question too about the code. Oh, Jordan all texted me. Oh. He's apparently not in the. Where's my phone? Need all five. I've lost my phone somewhere. Um, How'd you know? But, well, my watch. She said oh, I, yeah. I did the first five. The, um, the Minty code. So right now, this actually isn't through Minty yet, but the code when we get there, which will be when we start um, the lesson here in a little bit, the code is 62. 7376. So again, you can go to minty.com, type in that code 627376. Um, again, this isn't there right now, but when we switch over to it, you'll be able to get it on your device. So we got a winner. Daniel, yeah. you? Morrell. Daniel Morrell has been all over the treadmill. I can see that. I, can, can, I can't see him like losing any weight though. Can someone awesome. watching email the link? to John Beck. Uh, yeah, get a text and I'm not, I'm not, I'll not. i try to do it while I'm talking, but it'd be helpful if somebody... Uh, Thank you so much. So Jordan Aw yeah. was the winner? Uh, Jordan Aw, yeah. Nice job. Jordan, Jordan. Aw, well done. We'll... Uh, Home cooked meals, not working out. I don't know if he <laughs> actually had a prize for this, to be honest. It was... Uh, uh, another Irish Spring Bar of Soap. I yeah, believe that's yeah. What well, you get to... Your video is going viral on Facebook. He did the Toilet Paper Challenge. You should... Oh. I still have to do that for the bigger challenge. Oh, no, it's tough. It's right. not easy. Look up Jordan All and be amazed. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you just uh, – yeah, you did the, the code for uh, yeah. Menti. Um, do we have any other, uh, any other announcements? I believe so. Wow. All right. We're just we're rolling through. Well, um, we're going to be shifting, um, shifting gears here um, and trying to keep this – under an hour for you guys' sake, because we realize uh, it's one thing to attend a program to come to church for uh, a lengthy period of time, but like when you're just watching, uh, we realize there's a lot, um, there's a lot, there's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of other things going on, and it's just different. And so our goal is to keep this uh, a little bit, a little bit shorter. We have some. What we have coming up, though, we do have. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit, or primarily me. We're gonna look at um, look at Jesus. We're gonna look at his death and. Um, in general, which sounds depressing when you think about just Jesus' death, but um, it won't be so bad, I promise. And then we're going to have a – we'll do some more giveaways. But at the end, I want to announce uh, – we're going to announce the winner of the riddle. Yes. Yeah. And the winner of Quarantine Bingo uh, is coming Lots up as well. So we'll, we'll hold that off. The winners, I think, know they won, but uh, we'll announce for the rest of you that we're, we're participating in that. Um, but mm -hmm. So we're, as we shift over, though, we're at – again, this is menti.com. 
Um, and uh, this this is a feature. If you weren't if you didn't weren't with us last week, um, you can go to menti.com. You can type in six two seven three seven six, and uh, what that will do is that will allow you to see the slides. So like we realize that the quality of this uh, this feed is not. Yeah, it's you not, might not be able to read the screen very well, but yeah, it's it's uh and um yeah. So one, you can read the screen better. Two, you can keep it. Like you can download the slides, and uh, you'll you'll also be able to participate. That's the best part of this. Is we're gonna ask some questions, um, and hopefully get you guys engaged a little bit, and uh, then allow you to um, we can see your answers, and it'll it'll be a little bit like we're together, even though we clearly are not. So um, <laughs> we uh, I want to start off with a few. Um, a few questions um, that are strictly like icebreaker type questions just to make sure this, this is working for you. Um, and uh, so if the first, the first question actually is uh, which nice. picture, um, picture, see uh, there, I messed up the slide already, picture best describes your week. All right. So we have sleeping, Someone's bored screen already. time and bored, right? You can, uh, oh, all right. So I'm bored. Amuse me. Um, I hate cats, uh, <laughs> but I, I'm allergic. I'm, I but they make that. great. They made for a great chart. All right, screen so screen time's going screen up. Screen time out of twenty-four people, twenty-six. It also gives an idea how many of you are actually really engaging in what we're doing here. Um, screen yeah. time. Wow, I should have made. Not a many people are sleeping. Of how many hours? How many hours of screen time? Yeah, that's uh, screen time is is crushing. Multiple. Well, the next question. I kind of wow. thought that might be. That makes sense. The um the leading only 11 percent. the leading so one sleeping. so my i'm going to give a second here for anyone else to, to all answer. the people who would have been on the sleeping category are currently yeah, sleeping like, through this six right o'clock i just woke up yeah they're all right wow all right so we have uh, some pretty good participation here so 55 percent of you right over half of that answered oh. screen time so i'm going to switch to the next question all right so now this is and this is just to kind of make sure this is working for you which streaming service have you been using the most i assume that'd be so you have Netflix, okay. Disney Plus, Amazon Prime Video, YouTube, YouTube. or Hulu. Um, and so, oh man, YouTube is the first. <laughs> yeah, went out uh, of the way. Really all right. Disney uh, Plus, Amazon. Which uh, one have you been I, using the most? Um, I'm a, so we actually have YouTube TV. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, it's, uh, but Amazon Prime is a close second. We, we dropped Netflix because we don't, there's nothing that, those two things don't have, but what about you? YouTube still. Ah, uh, yeah, YouTube TV probably, but now Disney Plus. I watched Frozen two and the new Aladdin, um, so and Toy Story four. We watched a few Disney movies. Yeah, I like the, the new past, Lion like, King days. more than I like the new Aladdin. The new Lion King is definitely oh better. Netflix. Oh, just, Netflix jumped to Disney Plus. More people are getting in on this. Well, slightly more forty. Oh, 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 it's yeah. close. Disney, Disney Plus and Netflix. just like. It swapped a few times. I wonder if YouTube is all like just YouTube videos or YouTube TV. Because mine is like YouTube TV, but I bet that's I was, YouTube videos. Yeah, probably. Just wow. watching down a rabbit hole of YouTube right. videos. Looks like that's oh, oh, oh man! <laughs> Somebody, this is oh, I, this There's is no like intense for me, right? There's There's no sports. sports. This is, this is the best this is why I wear my Space Jam shirt and uh, just out of sadness. As close as you can get. There's to no basketball. Real sports. Going on. Tunes. So that has nothing to do with what we're going to be talking about. Uh, we just want to make sure this, this is working for you. Oh, Netflix is taking a commanding lead. But um, <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to um, – I'm afraid to leave that. I don't have a blank slide until I move um, to what's next. But I do want to um, – I'm going to pray just kind of as we transition into what we're talking about. Um, and I realize that you're at home and it's probably awkward. To, like, do I pray when he prays or what's that? Um, but I'm going to pray. And if you want to, you can join me. But, um, and then we're going to dive into uh, the question of did Jesus really die? Uh, and so last week, if you were watching or if you looked at the live stream or the recording afterwards, Jake went into, um, you know, really, um, what, was, what was the actual, like the main, it was, it was a suffering. The idea of how, you... could, how could a good God allow evil and suffering? So just that, that kind of existential question that people ask about life, especially in tough times. Um, so we thought it made sense to talk about during this time, um, both to kind of answer that question if you're asking it and equip you with the answer of how could God which we believe he is, uh, he exists, right? God, we believe God exists. We believe he is a good God. We believe he's all powerful, yet evil exists. So we dug into that question um, to talk about that idea. Absolutely. All right. Hey, if one of you back there, Dakota Barnes, message being said, she's trying to get in. She hasn't been able to. I don't know if you have any contact information for her. Send her the link. I think maybe there was a bad link that went out. And if that's the one, 
she got, she's probably in trouble. So, um, but yeah, uh, so we're, and we're kind of, at least for the next few weeks, we don't know how long it's going to last. We're going to kind of take an apologetics approach and with Easter coming, we're shifting into thinking through uh, Christ's death and resurrection. And so uh, the question uh, this week we're looking at is, did Jesus really die? And, and that might seem like a stupid question, um, but obviously if he didn't die, then uh, that changes a lot of things. So we're going to look at that, but let me pray and then mm-hmm. we'll, uh, we'll dive in. Uh, dear God, uh, we thank you so much for um, technology uh, and the, the blessings it can bring. Um, as far as even just being able to interact a little bit with each other, being able to see each other um, and uh, communicate when we're not in person, Lord, we thank you for that. Um, God, we also know, recognize that there's a lot of bad stuff with technology. And right now, I think we're using this for your glory. I think uh, hopefully what's edifying uh, for each other and, and uh, encouraging, especially in the next couple minutes or so. But um, I pray for the students who and now they're spending more time on, on, on devices and more screen time like we just looked at. Uh, I pray for that they, they would make wise choices. Uh, there's a lot of bad stuff, a lot of, a lot of stuff that technology can be used for that's not good, Lord. And so we, we thank you for the ways it can be used for good. I pray that you'd help us to protect us from the ways it can be used for, for bad means, for, for things that are harmful. Uh, and I pray for this time that uh, since we're you know, we're streaming where this is a, this is not like being in person. It's easier maybe to be distracted. It's easier to, to get up and leave the room. Uh, I pray that uh, that wouldn't be the case. I pray that uh, this would give us even a small sense of community until we can be back together. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So uh, I want I want you to, to uh, for, for all of you to imagine a situation with me. Um, I want you to imagine it's a normal Sunday night. Uh, and for most of you that are watching I that, probably means you'd be here um, at that Calvary uh, for a normal Live 44. Imagine we're gathered here in the block, and uh, Jake is leading a game. Uh, Jake's leading a game, but after the game, he steps down, and, and I come up to him, and I'm like, man, that's, that's the worst worst game I've ever seen. Like, that was – what a waste Yikes. of time. What were you, you doing? Like, wait till we're in the office to tell me. Yeah, <laughs> but it was just such a bad game that I'm like, why, why do you do what you do? Like, this is terrible. <laughs> and Jake had a rough day, and he just – his response is like, he just, he just couldn't handle it. So he goes to the sound booth. He picks up the soundboard, and he just breaks it over my head, right? Oof. And so I'm, I'm down on the ground, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm what looked to be lifeless. Um, Dan is just, uh, just distraught because – Only because the soundboard. The soundboard, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> that, he, we broke his soundboard. Jake broke his soundboard. No way. Um, and everyone's just kind of stunned. My wife, though, is the one person who, who cares, comes up, and she's, <laughs> she sees my lifeless body, and she's like, we better call 911. So the paramedics are, are en route, and they're, they're coming – but before they arrive, um, I get up, I stand up, and I say, um, I've risen from the dead, All right? Um, by show of hands, how many of you would believe that I actually rose from the dead? I, I hope you rose your hand. I, I, can't, I, I can't see. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I'm hoping. I, 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 I don't know if it happened to you. Nobody else knows, but I hope you rose some people. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, probably wouldn't believe I rose from the dead. Jake, what do you think would be a more likely explanation if I got up and said Ooh, I rose from the dead? What, what, what really happened? Dead. I'd probably, I'd probably guess that you just were knocked out for a little bit. Just that soundboard just took you out for a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, probably for more than a few minutes, honestly. But, but that's a more logical explanation, right? If if somebody gets you know gets knocked out and they get back up, your your first thought isn't they rose from the dead, right? The, the first thought is oh they didn't actually die, they're okay, or maybe they're not okay, but they're definitely not dead, right? And so uh, that's, that seems like a ridiculous illustration, but I say that because there's some people, right, that, that believe that about Jesus. And so when we talk about Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection, uh, they, they explain that away. They don't believe in the resurrection, partly because uh, for some people, they don't believe he actually died on the cross. They're like, they think he survived, uh, that he was buried, and that uh, so when he came out of the tomb three days later, it wasn't a resurrection from the dead. It was a, well, he just didn't die. And he was hiding for a few days. Um, and uh, he was self-isolating for, for <laughs> in a tomb for a few days. And, so, and, and I know it's, for some of you, a lot of you, you grew up in the church. It's probably like, that sounds stupid. You're like, that, who believes that? Well, people do. And honestly, if you go your whole life being told something, like Jesus died and rose again, and someone's like, well, he didn't actually die. If you've never heard some of that argument, or you've never heard where they're coming from or thought about it, it could be a little bit shocking. Uh, it, it could startle you a little bit. And so I think it's helpful to at least, as we, especially going into Easter, we're going into the celebration of his resurrection. Uh, we need to answer some questions that surround that, that, um, yeah. that a huge event. And so um, I want to um, 
yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little about that tonight. Uh, and I'm gonna hand it over um, to Jake for some questions here. Yeah. So again, back on the app, we got a question for you. So we want you guys to go ahead, um, share one sentence. Um, so you can type in one sentence how you would respond if someone told you, someone came up to t and told you, I don't believe Jesus really died. Um, they didn't believe he actually died on the cross. So one sentence, what would your first response be? This may be tough. You guys might have to think about this a little bit. Um, but if someone asked you that question, how would you respond um, in one sentence? So we'll give you some time to think. Um, the Bible, all right, cool. The yeah. Bible clearly states he did. Yeah, analytical, going straight to the <laughs> They wrong. I like that. <laughs> they wrong. <laughs> wrong. Just read the Bible. What evidence do you have to support that? That's a good question. In disbelief. Yeah. Uh, there were eyewitnesses. Yeah. How did you come to that conclusion? I think that's a great response. Yeah. Answering a question with a question. That's a good, good strategy. Ask them why, why, why do you think that way? Those are good. Just asking them why they, they've come to that conclusion, right? I think um, in 1 Peter th uh, 3, we talk about as Christians, we need to be prepared to give an answer uh, for, for the hope that we have. We need to yeah. give a, um, a defense and an answer. And so I think it's fair for other wrong go to church. Um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> make them prove we need to talk wrong. about speaking the truth in love next week. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think it's, it's also fair when people have different belief systems to, to ask them to give an answer for what they believe, you know? And so sometimes we spend so much time giving a defense for what we believe. Sometimes just asking them, why do, why do you come? Why do you have that conclusion? Um, yeah. I'm sorry. You don't believe that. May I ask why? Um, yeah. these are, yeah, those are good. I definitely appreciate all the people responding with a question. Cause I think that's, what your your point was was asking them to kind of defend a little bit their belief as well um and see that will also give you a better idea of where they're coming from their background maybe they weren't brought up in the church maybe they don't even have an understanding of what you're talking about so rather than diving right in and telling them they're wrong <laughs> right away um jumping in with a question maybe the best route to get that conversation started in a relational way yeah absolutely sure. well there's a it's another one another question here for you guys yeah. So next question. Those are great responses. Again, uh, I think we forgot to mention this last week, but at the end um, of this whole presentation um, on your phone or your device or whatever you're using, um, it should give you an option um, before you leave at the very last slide. If you want to be emailed um, the results, the slides, so it will email you um, the slides so you can go through the notes. You can talk through the notes again because people are asking for those notes. So be sure to look for that at the end. And we're also, um, we, I believe this week we downloaded the results to the questions um, and emailed them out. I believe Terry emailed them out in our kind of all parent family email. Um, so you'll be able to look at these again. I, I know they're scrolling pretty fast. Um, so the next question we have for you guys, um, if Jesus didn't die, what are the consequences for us? What's at stake? So if he didn't die, um, again, kind of playing the devil's advocate, looking at the other side of the equation, if Jesus didn't die, what, what does that mean for us? What are the consequences for us? Um, as, I mean, Christians, as believers, as humans, um, what are the consequences if Jesus didn't die on the cross? We aren't saved. Definitely, that's definitely a consequence. And if, and if you were here, I would ask you to expound on that. And I guess you probably could. So no, but risk of eternity in hell, we have no salvation. We wouldn't be saved. We would be given the free gift of eternal life with him. Our, our entire belief system is delegitimized. That is a, it's a big word. It's a, that's yeah. a good statement though. The burden of our sins would be pain. Yeah. Our sins wouldn't be forgiven. Yeah. We won't have. Yeah. So what I know this, it's a pretty simple question. It, and a lot of you have come with the same answers and it wasn't, it wasn't meant to like be one of those like stumping type of questions. Um, but I think what it does, especially at a time right now, like I think there's a daily updates of how many people have died yeah. from the coronavirus. Like it's, and it's all, it's, it's getting bigger. Right. And so, Every day, you're like, oh man, like when's when's the peak? And then you have to, just I think yesterday or today they came out with X, like, oh, how many Americans they think? You know, uh, one of the doctors that comes out every day said a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. So the, as a nation, right, and the world is thinking about death, right? And so so often death is viewed in such negative terms, right? We we tend to talk about death in ways that are. Uh, not positive uh and yet um we talk about it as final it's, it's as final like, it's yeah. definitive and yeah. it's, it's it's sadness and right and some of that is right i'm not saying you should throw a party when a family member dies but um i think it's i think what we want to do tonight and, and is if we're as we're thinking about death looking at the death that that really changes our perspective of our, on our own deaths 
mm-hmm. and on the deaths of others. And, and that's the death of Jesus Christ. So um, if Jesus didn't die, if, if, if he, then he didn't resurrect. And if he didn't resurrect, then our sins are left unpaid for. And if our sins are left unpaid for, then we've, we've lost all hope of heaven and, and we're destined for eternity in hell. And so it might seem like such a simple thing, um, but it, it's so important. And just because it's simple doesn't mean it's, it's, um, it's not significant. And so um, Jesus, um, Jesus died uh, and he resurrected. Um, and with, with Easter right around the corner, it's important that we can, that we can defend this truth. Um, because you're, every time Easter, there's always news like Time Magazine or some you know, big article about like the real Jesus and they'll claim to have new information, like didn't go to the cross or something like that. And, mm-hmm. um, and it, if, you're not, if you're not prepared to answer that, uh, it, can be, it can be tough. So I think our best evidence as Christians to the death of Christ is how he died. Uh, the Bible tells us in several places that he was crucified. And I'm going to forewarn you as we talk a little about this, it, it could get a little bit graphic um, and, and not like that much, but like at the same time, if we're talking about his death and the cross, uh, you know, you, you do have the option to, to lower the volume uh, or, uh, it, you know, if, if you have a weak stomach or something like that, I, I, I don't plan on being too graphic, but I do want to give you that heads up that that's what we're talking about. Um, my goal isn't to scare you or gross you out, but mm-hmm. I hopefully, hopefully give you a kind of a clear picture. And uh, it's uh, hopefully have a better understanding of what Jesus went through uh, and what he did for you uh, and for me and, and not just how it happened, but why it's so important. Uh, and so um, as we move forward, Jay, can you read John chapter 19 uh, verses 13 through 16? Yeah, absolutely. John 19, um, 13 through 16. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement and an Aramaic Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So uh, without going into, I mean, I'm going to skip over some things and I hope I don't lose you, but this is, this is Jesus' sixth and final trial, which is believed to be around uh, people smarter than me that have studied this, believe it's around 7.30 a.m. based on the times that were given in the various gospel accounts. And, and Mark tells us that Jesus is, is nailed to the cross at um, what, again, what most people think is 9 a.m. So Matthew 27, 26 also gives us some important information regarding some of the stuff that's happening around this time. And so uh, in Matthew 27, 26, it says, then he released for them Barabbas and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Um, and so with that, I mean, that's, it's one of those passages you've probably heard, but like, you're probably thinking like, well, what is, what does it mean to be scourged? Uh, um, and uh, what is that? What is that? Uh, that mean it sounds bad and most and you're right it does but it, but um, I'm gonna go into this is where I go a little bit of depth just to just uh, in case you haven't heard this before I think I think it's helpful to know what Christ went through um, at least some of it at least have an idea so there's two types of scourging uh, Jewish mes- method of scourging is recorded in Deuteronomy 25 and uh, where they're told the person was not to be beaten more than 40 40 times uh, Roman scourging however did not have a specific limit and it's it's no surprise uh, that the Romans referred to this as as the halfway death. Uh, it was, it was yeah, rightfully so. I mean, it was idea was, it was not, it was meant to bring you as close to death without killing you as, as possible. And so before the beating uh, began, a vic- the victim, in this case, Jesus would be stripped naked, allowing nothing to protect him. So, uh, I mean, uh, even a thin t-shirt uh, would, would provide some level of protection. And so Jesus is, is, is he's naked, he's stripped naked. Um, and uh, so there's the, the embarrassment that comes with that, right, too. So there's, there's obviously the beating, but he's, he's naked before a public crowd. And there would have been a stump or a post probably um, know, about the size of like a, a stool um, that maybe we'd have up here on a normal Sunday morning. Uh, and he would there have some, uh, some chains hooking him to the, to the top of that stool uh, so that he couldn't go anywhere. All right? And so, again, this is, this is a, it's not like a positive uplifting part of this, but, the, no. but I think it's important to know. So the beating mm-hmm. would be done by a professional torturer called a lictor, uh, I think is how you say it. So scourging would have been, done, been his job, right? This would have been like, you'd have been a professional at this, which is kind of a, I mean, I can't imagine as a child, but like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Like, I want to be that guy. I want to be the lictor who, no. who punishes people. I don't know how you get into that trade, but that's, that's, that's what he is. He was a pro at, at 
torturing people. And so uh, he was his job and he would, he would have been good at it. And he would have used a thing called a flagellum. Uh, it was a piece of wood about foot, foot and a half with, with long pieces of leather on it. And in that leather would have been attached glass, bone, sharp pieces of metal or metal like objects. And um, basically meant to inflict harm when it was, it was used. And so now believe it or not, this is, um, I kind of laughed, even though it's not comical. Uh, he would have been about six feet away from Jesus when he did this. So he was practicing social distancing before yeah. it was cool. Um, well, right. And so he was about six feet away with the leather strips. And again, that's not exactly an appropriate time. No, to, to, to buzzword to, right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he's six feet away and he's, they'd come back and he, they, they would, with the whip, with the pieces of leather. And the idea wasn't just that like a normal, we think of a whip, like it just kind of smacks um, like a rat tail or something like you do with towels or something like mm-hmm. that. But it was a, it would, it would dig in. The, the stuff would dig in and then when you pulled it back that's when like the big damage was done so like it would catch on the skin and it would it would rip again i told you it's a, it's a little bit graphic but but that's what that was before he even went to the cross uh um he's he's being scourged uh, his skin being ripped off um as he's publicly embarrassed naked in, in a crowd right and so um and so it's likely that a person in this situation would pass out uh and so they would dump salt water on them to 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 wake him up and salt water on like, if you ever cut your face, like a paper cut mm. and you get like some stings yeah, like on a small cut. And so if you can just, I mean, it's hard to even imagine like salt water on open wounds. Right. And so that's, again, that's just like going into the cross, but Jay, can you read for us Matthew 27, 27 to, to 30 as we keep moving? Yeah, absolutely. Matthew 27 verse 27 um, says, then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole battalion before him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. So they're, they're continuing to make entertainment out of him. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, they're, they're, they're putting a fake crown on him, a fake scepter, a fake robe. Um, the, the Greek word here for robe is, is a, I, can't, I can't even say it right. It's been too long since I took Greek, but it, it's not a long flowing robe. It's like a short robe that goes like elbow length. I mean, it's, it's a hardly, it's not what you think of when you think of robe. And so it's not covering Jesus, right? It's, it's a mockery um, by giving it to him as a robe. And so uh, what we have here is, is the son of God, Jesus, who's basically naked, bleeding, and he's being mocked at, laughed at um, for, uh, um, as he's getting ready to go to the cross. And so during all of this, Jesus fulfills a prophecy of Isaiah 53, seven, and he never opens his mouth. He, does, he, doesn't, he doesn't plead his case. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't stop them, even though he's innocent. And so uh, with that, he's got this crown of thorns, which again, I'm told are like three, three and a half inch long thorns that are not your typical rose bush thorns that are still annoying. Um, but um, these, are, these, are just, you know, these are massive thorns that if you ever... You know, you see like uh, whether it's in the, the not that you can trust the movies or things like that, but when you see pictures of a crown of thorns, I mean that's usually what you see too of these these like spikes, um, and that's accurate for the type of thorns that would have been used for um, for Jesus uh, and for the crown of thorns. So he's uh, just insult to injury. He's he's getting beaten. Um, if you keep reading Matthew twenty seven thirty one, uh, can you yeah can you read that? Yeah, and something just to kind of oh, yeah, add because yeah. I was uh, I, I knew that you were talking about this obviously so I did some research on the scourging as well um, and there's a lot of record um, like outside of the Bible of this happening to other people um, so I thought it was interesting that at the beginning there it talks about them taking Jesus into the governor's headquarters because some of the records that I, I found about um, this is they would take them into people's houses um, like the master the the person in charge and the scourging would take place so that when they would bring them back out it would scare other people around and it would be like a scare tactic to show the power of that person who was um, having the scourge done on the other person. Um, and so I thought it was just interesting that again, the world and the earth is trying like to show their power over Jesus um, and how often we do that because that's what it was used for. It was used to show your power over someone as well as embarrass them. Um, so the same exact thing was done to, to, to the son of God to show um, as an effort for the Romans, right, to show their power over, yeah. over this person that claimed to be the Lord. Yeah, that's, um, that's good. Yeah, so Matthew 27, verse 31. Um, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. Yeah, so at, at this point, um, they're, they're, 
as they led him away to be crucified, he's, he's going to be putting the cross. Uh, you know, a lot of times we think of Jesus carrying an entire cross. It's likely just the cross beam uh, that, um, that many believe that he would have carried, the, the part the, that his arms would have been eventually um, uh, nailed to. Um, and uh, uh, basically, as he's carrying that, they would have put this uh, sign around his neck, basically, that would have told everyone the crime that he was committed of, the, the, what he was uh, supposedly guilty of. And uh, that would have been, you know, 12 inches by 24 inches, a sign that eventually would be nailed to the cross when he was hung. And um, in this case, King of the Jews, right? That that's, um, that's what he would have worn he, as, he, as he takes um, that walk. And unlike today's executions, uh, and not that most of us probably haven't witnessed a real execution because they're, they're relatively private events. They're not um, generally public things. Uh, and this was intended to be public, just like what Jay said. Like this was, this was meant to scare people. Like when they saw the crime and they saw what happened to that person for doing that crime or committing that crime, it was meant to keep people, it's a kind of a reality check. Like I'm not going to do that. I don't want to end up in that situation uh, where I'm, this is, this is what would happen to me. So it was meant to be not just humiliating to the individual, not just harmful or hurtful and painful for that individual. It was meant to scare uh, those who were watching, or at least those who saw the end result. And so crucifixion wasn't invented by the Romans. Uh, it's said to have been invented hundreds of years earlier by the Persians, adopted by the Egyptians, and perfected by the Romans. Uh, they, they actually designed it uh, and tweaked it over time to, to inflict the maximum amount of punishment uh, before mm-hmm. death. Um, it was slow, painful, ex- extremely embarrassing. And, and they even, uh, I think over time, they, they began to nail the feet um, up a little higher, and they found that if the knees were bent and um, they would be able to push themselves up to, uh, to exhale. And if the longer they could breathe, the longer they would suffer. And so they even, mm. they even kind of adapted it um, to uh, hopefully allow them to keep breathing longer so that therefore they would suffer uh, longer. They, they were they're definitely, um, it's, it's kind of sick when you think, I mean, think about how the lengths they went to, to inflict this kind of, of punishment, um, even for those who were guilty, even for those who who did uh, maybe deserve a death penalty, um, this is still a horrific um, uh, death. And so uh, if the Romans wanted to speed things up, though, because they, they have a uh, record of some people lasting up to nine days on the cross, and uh, if they wanted to speed up, they would break the legs, and that would remove the possibility for the person on the cross to be able to, to lift themselves up to exhale. They could breathe in, but apparently you had to um, you had to kind of pull yourself up to be able to breathe out. And so to speed that along, they would break, uh, break legs, but they didn't have to do that. Psalm 34, actually, um, Psalm 34, verse 20, there's a prophecy about the Messiah, uh, about Jesus. And it says that he keeps all of his bones and not one of them is broken. And, and Jesus uh, fulfills that. And uh, actually, uh, can you read John 19, 32 and yeah, 33? Definitely. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Yeah. So what I, what I appreciate about this passage is some people um, would think that, well, if Jesus was uh, um, maybe a really, just a really intelligent um, Jewish man, recognized all the prophecies and tried to fulfill them all. And that's, he's not actually the Messiah. He just tried to, you know, he just knew the prophecies and tried to mm-hmm. fulfill them himself. Well, this is one that he couldn't, have fulfilled on his own, like without, if he wasn't God, you know, like the, it would have been likely, um, he died before they, they broke his leg. Like he, that was, that was other people were involved in that. And, and, um, and so again, he's fulfilling prophecy, uh, all the way through this, uh, through this process. Um, John 19 goes on to say, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear. And then at once there came out blood and water, um, and combination of shock and rapid heart rate and, and heart failure, Medical doctors tell us that a collection of clear, waterly, watery fluid forms around the heart and lungs, and an incision like yeah. uh, the one described in John 19 would result in fluid and blood. Um, and so that's consistent, right? That that description is consistent with with a, someone who's died. Uh, and so uh, this would have been uh, the Romans' medical examination. This is like, you know, when they're when the flatlining happens at the hospital. This is how they know when someone has has died. And they didn't mess this up. This was their job, which means if your job is to kill people, as crazy as that sounds, if you don't do that well, uh, there's consequences. And in the Roman government, it usually meant you die too, right? And so, so they needed to be good at their job. It would not have gone well to, to go through all of this, uh, put Jesus up on a cross, and then he survived. Like, if he wasn't dead, 
um, there would be consequences for those who, who did this. And so they made sure they, they, they were good at their job uh, and they succeeded. Uh, and they, um, when Jesus died on, on the cross, he, he did not come off alive by any means. So, so prior to his death, his intense pain, um, I mean, just think about all, he nailed his, his hands uh, and feet. Um, his hands would have cramped up, probably would have, uh, they say, experienced paralyzed in the, in the pectoral area just because he's, his hands are outstretched. Um, because of all this, experts aren't even sure whether people who died on the cross, if it was, sometimes they think it was from hunger. Uh, I think somebody even said that, like, he starved. Uh, and sometimes uh, just, you know, you're not getting fluids, dehydration, and, and um, especially if you're on the cross for days. Uh, suffocation, right? If you can't pull yourself up to exhale, right? It's, but sometimes it's just the mere pain and shock on the body. So there wasn't even a clear, like, this is how people die on the cross because there's so many, I guess, ways that the cross could kill you uh, in a sense. So, um, but one thing we do know is that nobody survived. Uh, nobody survived the cross. That's, there's not, it just didn't happen. Not just with Jesus, but like, it just didn't happen. They were good at this. Yeah. Um, and so um, did Jesus really die? Well, Absolutely. I think that's, uh, <laughs> I think, again, you might think, duh, like, why do we even talk about this? But I think it is important to think through, um, not just the how, but, but I think the why. And I think sometimes the how is a good way to kind of transition us to, why did he go through all that for us? Why did, why did he do that? Um, um, well, so that brings, a, um, brings us to a question, I guess. Yeah. And just, I mean, just to add, I think the how Jesus died, I think it's really important to look at other um, his, the historical accuracy behind it, as Justin touched on the historical accuracy of um, surrounding his death on the cross and how that would have happened, and then the historical accuracy of the scourging and other other manuscripts that kind of point to the accuracy of Scripture. I think that's huge when talking to unbelievers or people who might um, be posing this question, right? We're trying to answer the question, did Jesus really die? Um, and we're really, I, for the most part, I doubt we're answering this question for you all. Um, I would guess that 98% of you all would have said yes right at the beginning and said, yes, he died. Um, we're, we're trying to give you answers for this question to other people, um, give you a way to answer this question for others. Um, and one way to do that is to point them to the historical accuracy of Scripture outside of Scripture. Yes, we always want to bring them back to Scripture, um, but some people might shut, shut down right away when you say it because the Bible says so, and then they don't believe the Bible, then what do you do? Um, but there's the amount of times that Scripture um, is also backed up by uh, manuscripts outside of Scripture um, throughout history is, is awesome as well. So brings us to our kind of our final question um, of the night. What scripture comes to mind when you think about why Jesus had to die? What scripture comes to mind when you think about why Jesus had to die? Um, so yeah, we'll see see what you guys say. What scripture verses you're thinking up out there? Hopefully, you're still. If you're not, you, if you're not logged in anymore. Um, that's menti.com uh, sixty two seventy three. 76 can you turn the mascot back on uh <laughs> while we're waiting for Maybe. questions here yeah, um, we got a request for the mascot lots of john 3 16 john 3 16 through 18 romans 3 23 i wonder if they can hear that through our mics because it's got a loud can, can you hear that through the uh on the I'm not sure romans 5 28 romans 6 23 wow john 3 16 is that whole column yeah, he's – see if he stays. Nope. All right. Um, John 3.16, yeah. So, uh, yeah, for God's will of the world. Lots of Romans 3.23. He was only God. Awesome. Whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Um, so, Romans 3.23, for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. So, he had to, he had to die because we fall short of God's glory. Yeah. Um, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Is that Romans uh, – no, that's – Exclamation! Um, I like the exclamation. Yeah, that, uh, Romans six twenty: the wages of yeah. sin is death. We've earned death, okay. but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Um, Romans five eight: God demonstrated His love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. First um, Peter three eighteen: that's actually you know what I'm just gonna whoever did that. Um, that's where I'm gonna. That's the verse that I want to point you to. So yeah, um, you can still. still let that scroll up. I think it's, to mind. I think it's interesting that the, how much this question connects to your first question uh, or one of your first questions of if Jesus didn't die, what are the consequences for us? And lots of these verses speak specifically to the consequences for us. Um, if Jesus didn't die and actually the good result of his death. Um, 
So tying it all together. Oh yeah, Romans six twenty three. Cool. I mean, that's that's. I mean, the wages of sin is like wages of sin is death. Without uh, without Jesus, there's no other half of that. Um, to that verse, uh, for the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. First yeah. Peter three eighteen says this. For those of you that saw that, maybe you're like, what is what is that verse? Um, for Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, um, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. And so that, that middle right there, I think, is what I, I want to kind of encourage you just to like think through, is that, that he might bring us to God. Um, and so I think sometimes a lot of, especially at Calvary, a lot of you have um, been going to church, it seems like your whole life, maybe literally you, the first day after you were born, you're in church, uh, type of a person, type of family. And um, you've heard this message so much that it's easy to just be like, I'm a Christian. I believe, I believe it. And we don't think about it. It becomes just part of, it's almost, uh, we just move on from the cross. We move on from Jesus' death and resurrection. And so I think it's helpful to spend some time just thinking about, um, thinking about a, a death in, in that actually gives our life meaning. Uh, whereas we're thinking about death all around us and there's a lot of depressing stuff in the, the news and it can create fear and worry. This is a death that changed our lives or could change your life if, if mm-hmm. depending on where you put your faith or if you put your faith in Jesus. But, um, and, and the nice thing is he doesn't, Jesus doesn't stay dead, right? Uh, for the, we're going to cover in, in a couple of weeks. Uh, did he really rise from the dead? All uh, right. Cause some people are like, well, okay, we're not going to argue that he died, but there's no way he rose from the dead. That might be a more common argument. There's a, there are different, you know, thoughts, whether he, someone stole his body, whether, uh, yeah. you know, there's just different, there's different, things that people have, have kind of that don't believe in the resurrection have uh, come up with. And we're, we're going to look at a little bit of that uh, in a couple of weeks, but Jake, what are you teaching on next week? Yeah. So next week um, I'll be touching on the idea the question, is Jesus really the Messiah? Was Jesus really the Messiah? Was he really God um, or something else? Um, so we've established, I think this week, I think we've established the idea. Yes, he did die. Um, we can look at history, look at the Bible and see that that is a fact that Jesus did die. Um, but did that, did that death really matter? It wouldn't have mattered if he wasn't God, if he wasn't the Messiah, the Savior. Um, his death would be um, just the same as any other, any other guy dying at that time. So we're going to look at, um, yes, he did die. Why does it matter that he died? Why, why does it mean something to us that he died? Um, and we're going to see that how, whether he was God and the Messiah, like he said he was, or whether he was something else and how we can um, see the truth to the answer of that question. Um, next week absolutely I, and i love that i think i think you hit the nail on the head like it's if you're like of course he died well um i mean if, if he's not god though then then he's just another person's death and yeah. however many people who have died up until right. this point in history and so that's that's huge really like why um why it's important to be able to explain that jesus is beside he's the guy he's god um all right so um we want to finish off with a few um few more giveaways and uh it's yeah. been about we're doing pretty good we, our hope is to be about an hour and we're we're getting down to the end here um and so we're going to be switching back and we're, we're giving dan a workout here so you know usually we put everything into one program <laughs> called pro presenter and he's able to just kind of it's all works nicely but um <laughs> because of this all right the, some of the stuff that is uh um that really gets crowd engagement which because we can't do it in person has to be done through different programs and so he has, that's why he's got like six laptops back here and uh yes. um switching plugging different things into different ones and uh he is uh um he's a, a champ uh meanwhile he's using his own personal phone to do all this live streaming <laughs> um because his phone has eight cameras it's an iphone 50 or uh, iPhone 50 yeah it's I the, so. yeah i never know which camera to look it at has, it's, it's it's a too many of it's them. a camera with some phone right. features really it's it's Essentially, that's and what it another, is. See, it's a different one of Dan's laptops because it's a different Shrug. background. Or does um, it change, Dan? Oh, it changes uh, to different. Oh, he's got to have a scrolling feed of the children. <laughs> the children. Um, all right. All right. All right. That's where I think zoom, you're just proud of your job. Zoom in. So all right. This it. one's not a winner. This one's not a winner. Again. Uh, we're going to do this. What if it's Corinne um, again? <laughs> That'd be unfortunate. An unfortunate yeah, day for um, Corinne, if this is you. So uh, another test run, you don't win if this stops on you. The That's Beermans, yeah. <laughs> we forgot the R. But, uh, yeah. um, Beerman but family, Beermans, thank you for joining us. Thanks for joining us. You didn't win. You didn't. Sorry, Dora. Well, you got Sorry, a shout-out, I guess. Um, for, that's a win. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're helping. Yes. Uh, they um providing, I think I saw some phone assistance for those who might be using sewing machines to make awesome. masks. Oh. She's uh, 
That's awesome. That's All right. right. This yeah. one is a winner um, of a puzzle, of a word search, whatever. In large print. Jordan. Jordan. Oh. Double the winner. Wow. We're going to send you two bars of soap. Uh, or, we're going to one Dove and one <laughs> Irish Springs. Two bars of soap. Two bars. <laughs> Both hands. Not a word puzzle, no. That would that would just make sense. We're just gonna give you two bars of soap. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. How did that happen twice? All right. Uh, well, all right. This is this is this is. Uh, we're gonna give you a. It wasn't rigged. Um, a lo- great big. <laughs> giant seriously, print. these are um, huge. It doesn't uh, seem like much of a challenge for a giant print word search, isn't that like? No, there's like eight <laughs> words to find. All right. So let's see. Who do we have here? Paul Manring. Oh, man. Paul, congratulations. I hope you're watching. I hope you stuck around this far. I want to encourage you to do Puzzle 21, Wyoming Cities. That Interesting sounds like facts a- about Paul that I learned this week is that he went on a 40-mile unicycle ride last week. Yeah, his brother Luke told me that. 40 it- mile. I don't even know how that is possible or makes sense. But Somebody right now, Google, to see whether <laughs> what's the Guinness record. Guinness World for- record. It's, it- that's I'm, a long time. So yeah, that's a very long I'm, unicycle I'm, I'm ride. Balance. I can hardly. I went to Sky Zone, <laughs> and uh, my coordination. I broke my ankle after about five minutes of jumping. So oh, you look pretty coordinated with the toilet paper roll. Oh uh, well, it, it, back. it took a few tries. Um. All right. So last. Uh, Some winners. More winners. Um, oh, more more winners. Uh, just winning stuff left and right. Yeah, these aren't very exciting prizes, so we're just gonna give out a lot of them. But uh, the yeah, winner. I'll start. The winner for the riddle. <laughs> Um, I gave you all a riddle on Friday. So the winner, the first person I had, multiple people um, text me and respond with the answer to the riddle. But the first text that I got um, pretty early Friday morning, actually, was from Liliana Lamb. Liliana Lamb was the first person to answer the riddle. Um, What was the answer? The answer to the riddle. It was a riddle about a light bulb. So I'm not going to tell you the riddle because I'm going to make you go back and watch this just then. But the answer to the riddle uh, was to flip one of the light switches on, leave it on for a little while you know like five to ten minutes turn it off flip another one on then when you go downstairs there's one bulb that's off but it's warm right so you know that went to the first switch there's one bulb that's on you know that went to the other switch that's up and then the one that's off and cold was the one that you never switched is that yeah I'm, blind, uh, blind, blind I'm, bulb. so liliana got the right yeah. answer a lot of other people texted me the right answer too they're just too slow um to beat her so you will be getting a word search puzzle um, to continue. Yeah. They're working, hours working, of, working. of mediocre fun. Uh, <laughs> and then the, uh, the, I also want to announce faith Buckheisen. I don't know if you're, you're still tuning in. If you, if you, if you came in faith Buckheisen won quarantine bingo. Um, and there's some others that, that came in that just were just too late. Uh, she got it in early clip. and she, um, if, I uh, if you're able to, I'd love to show you some of the stuff she did, but um, I, I can fact check it. I, I, I looked back, looked, she had a legitimate bingo. I think it was the top row um, that she did of that, that quarantine bingo from last week. So uh, I, as a, I had a $10 Starbucks gift card in my office that I, I think I got for something a while ago. And then I just, because everything I forgot was for. And uh, I don't know if you drink coffee, Faith, but if not, let me know. We'll, we'll uh, I don't know. Whenever places open again, we'll yeah. get you something you uh, that, that, gift card that, that you'll use. Um, but if not, we'll get this out to you sooner than later. And I think their drive through is still going. So nice job. there you go. All right, last announcement. We're going to let you go. Um, next week, just for fun, we're going to see if this even works. Uh, we're going to have a Fortnite theme. Oh, Not the game. Not the game Fortnite. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would just that'd make too much sense. So, But we're going to, since you guys are watching from your phones and things, if you want to make like a kid's fort, like back when you were – little in your living room or something you put blankets over like the dining room chairs and that yeah i mean maybe maybe you you're quarantined right so who knows apparently if you build forts and eat lucky charms you're a child (laughs) so (laughs) Uh, i feel like i'm I'm judging you guys right now yeah i'm gonna go home and do it now just to make you feel better but uh sorry i'll let you explain uh, what what the uh, challenge if you want to watch in from your own from fort uh basically they're gonna be like a pajama party uh which might already be the case uh we don't know but um the wanna, family is sitting in a fort right now yeah oh we're perfect. already ready for next week <laughs> yeah there you go just leave it up for the whole week but take a picture of it let us know it'd be it's fun for us to kind of see some of the families that are chiming in yeah. and, and watching and so if you there's no prize for this uh just i think it'd be cool so if you want to watch from a fort just have a we i don't think we can pull it off up here but uh, i might bring my sleeping bag 
<laughs> just rolled up <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> we should probably response. stop. This is a this is where it goes. Down. Last thing though, yeah. if you guys want to download Words with Friends too, <laughs> um, I I downloaded it and joined through it right Facebook. Now. You can challenge me um, to a battle of wits and just spelling words. Um, so Words with Friends too, find it, uh, friend me on it or whatever you have to do through Facebook. I'd love to play some. Scrabble. I, I played that when I was a kid too, back when I had. You know, I'm charms. just a child. We're si we need to sign off before I. Oh. My hair got made fun of. My age is getting made fun of. I'm just feeling really Welcome insecure. Welcome to youth ministry. <laughs> right. Well, it yeah, has been. It, it has been fun. Uh, I'll tell you. Uh, do you want to pray us out? Oh yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> I'll pray us out. All right. All right, let's pray. Dear Father, thank you so much for this time together. Um, for. Um, the joy that we can have just being together, even though it's um, through a screen. Um, thank you for the truth of the lesson that Justin brought to us. Um, the the truth that um, you sent your son here and that he did actually die. Thank you for the hope that comes with that as well, as we'll be celebrating in a few weeks, that the resurrection um, and what that brings. Thank you for the, the truth that we don't have to face the consequences that would have happened um, if you had not sent your son to die on the cross for our sins. Um, so in this time um, of kind of just struggle and a lot of stress and anxiety. Thank you that we don't have to be fearful or afraid of, of our, of our own death because of your son's death on the cross and the hope and the joy that that can bring to us. Um, be with everyone out there, their families, keep them safe, help them to continue enjoying fellowship with each other. Um, and just thank you once again for our ability to, to do ministry um, with our brothers and sisters in Christ um, through the technology that we have today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.